testing one two it is going and let's get rid of this test this although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's a reality to it and Test this. I, I the role of aerospace companies as holders of potentially basic scientific knowledge not shared with the academic world it seems very wrong to me. It may be wrong, but it's um, true. It is true. You believe it's true? Yeah, I know it's true. You know that there's physics knowledge held by aerospace companies that is not There known. certainly is materials knowledge, Aerosol. which involves topological physics. Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that briefs all of the presidents on UFOs, a guy named Hal Putoff. For more Let's try this again. Uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. With this. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. From my uh, contacts and so on, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject, and there's a reality to it, and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. The role of aerospace companies as holders of potentially uh, basic scientific uh, knowledge not shared with the I academic think, world seems very wrong to me. There may be wrong, but it's um, true. Enough information coming it is out true. You believe it's true. To finally it's true. Rest. You know that there's physics knowledge held by aerospace companies that is not known. There certainly is materials knowledge. <laughs> which involves topological physics. Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that briefs all of the presidents on UFOs, a guy named Hal Putoff. From truly deep state increased knowledge is likely not to come I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's a reality to it. And uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to, to uh, learn more about it. Um, <clears throat> I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, the, the software was crashing, so I had to retest everything and run it all at once. And uh, another rough start, I guess you're used to them if you can possibly stand to be back here. And it's been six weeks, so that's my excuses for why that was a rougher. Oh, maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll stand the test of time. But you're here for the tall terahertz tales. I'm going to pause now and get right back to it. Pause and come right back. And here I am. And I think it's rolling. This thing updated and, uh, and crashed and everything. You know, it's always it's odd. I feel more prepared and ready and enthused uh, than any ever before. And I'm ready to go. And there it goes. It you know, whatever. I had a hard time for a minute there. And now I'm ready to start with some substantiveness. Four minutes in already. Boy, am I wasting your time or not? Here you are. You're here for the tall terahertz tales. New and improved thumbnail skills. 
Wow. Will that get more eyeballs? I don't know. But we're here for something substantive and a little couple of laughs and mashups and goofball things. Let's take one more look there. Yes, we are recording. That's fine. Let's just go. So, we're here for this. The Tall Terror Hurts Tales Twitter moment. And those of you who are watching probably know all what this is all about. A lot of it, you know some, some of this better than I do, some of the background. And the background is Hal Prudoff and Eric, it is Eric, it's not his brother. Yes, Eric Weinstein uh, have a meeting and this guy, Jesse Michaels, films it. And uh, you know who those people are, I hope. Uh, this Twitter moment is linked directly below. And you can click on it and open it. You don't have to be a member of Twitter. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just stop the, the uh, video and read it. And do your t Google searches on who the heck is Hal Putoff. But... That's what we're doing here. And we are covered by fair use. We are talking about news. Big, big news. Big news. Big shots talking about big news. A like and subscribe. Say it out of habit. Uh, that's just there for laughs. Uh, do we want to get into it yet? Yes. Uh, you heard these guys speaking in that mashup intro. I don't think we need to play this little video again. We know the conversation's pretty trippy. Now let's play it again, why not? Let's be uh, diligent here. The role of aerospace companies as holders of potentially basic scientific knowledge not shared with the academic world. It seems very wrong to me. Maybe wrong, but it's um, true. It is true. You believe it's true? Yeah, I know it's true. You know that there's physics knowledge held by aerospace companies that is not There known. certainly is materials knowledge, materials which knowledge. involves topological physics. Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that briefs all of the presidents on UFOs, a guy named Hal Putoff. For more pretty trippy, folks. Ah, what else does he say? Now, this was Hal at the SCU meeting, and this guy here, or, um, well, Ruby, uh, made a nice little short clip of Hal, and uh, it really caught my attention. You know, I was go definitely going to make a video on this Twitter moment, uh, but the, but the uh, role of Eric Ruby gave me my angle here, I guess, because in this little clip, Hal kind of kicked me into another reality of viewpoint. And I follow this stuff all the time. From my so, uh, contacts and so on. Uh, let's listen. I, from my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think, although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest, that this is not a tinfoil hat subject, and there's reality to it, and... Uh, <clears throat> The government is making a concerted effort to to uh, learn more about it. Um, I think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. So what does that tell us? Tinfoil hats. That's why I'm here. Uh, about deep state and you know, I'm surprised to hear him use that language and I heard I heard this speech before but at the time I was listening for technical details and he gets a really big picture I think he's given us a big picture here saying hey tinfoil hats Don't look to us and you may or may not know who uh, Hal's background he was with the CIA he's a PhD in physics and go look him up, but he I saw him speak, and he said it right at the thing, and it was very sincere. You know, once you're in the CIA, you, you can't, you know, you never get out. I mean, he didn't use the, you know, 
Godfather uh, quotation or anything. I don't think he did, but uh, he, you know, he's, he's saying, look, if you tinfoil hats get something right, don't expect us to, don't expect to hear about it. So I kind of always knew that because I think I'm right about something which we'll be going over here in detail. And um, I don't know, it kind of changed my mood. It helped uh, something which will happen later. Anyway, let's go over the whole scenario. Now I was thinking about, I'm going to make a video about this and I'm going to... Um, uh, you know, you know how common it is, especially you UFO Twitter types and you YouTube listeners. You know how many battles are going on. It's it's every day. It's uh, you know somebody attacks somebody, and we all pay attention to it. So I can't help but think like, well, I'll go after these guys for, you know, uh, sitting on information, even though they're the ones that are bringing the information. You know, it's. <laughs> We all know what that dilemma is for these guys. But for us, we have to, I don't know, deal with it accordingly. So are these the good guys, the bad guys? I don't know. Who do you ask? Depends on what day it is. My opinion's changed on some of these things, and it'll change back and all that. But I think he's here doing us a favor. So now I'm here taking the high road, which is I'm more comfortable at. I don't want to attack people or attack anything things I mean, I was a lawyer for years that's all we do confrontation I get sick of it I am I'm retired now I really want to you know get something done here without you know with the least amount of grief so why attack people when you don't need to there's enough of that entertainment elsewhere and I'm as guilty as watching it as anyone else but here Let's take his advice. Thank you, sir. We're going to do that. In context of this, the tall terahertz tales. The link is below for your convenience. You do not have to be a member of Twitter. So we're going to talk about, uh, we'll just go over the tweets. Hopefully it's idiot proof so I can just go down the tweets I practiced yesterday. And it'll flow. So, this moment was started when I saw Project Unity giving us this preview of Hal and Mr. Weinstein and Jesse. Now, Weinstein is with Founders Fund. He, he's from Academia. He's a PhD in math. He has a theory of everything. He's as Ivy League as you can get, I guess, suppose, and, and so is Hal, except he went to, uh, or he's in more physics, and he's more math, but they meet. Um, Jesse's the filmmaker, he's involved in Founders Fund somehow, which I'm going to have a wake-up call for them later in this uh, video, I'm going to get on their case a little bit, and... Um, uh, so, uh, Project Unity, his name is Jay, he, he get, got a preview and he showed it to us and we all got all excited to see the big video, which is also linked below, and I'll talk about briefly in a, in a minute. It's an hour long of these two talking. And uh, you saw the overview, and I will not play it again. So... Project Unity says he thinks Weinstein and Putoff will... This will be a game changer. We might see him energized. So he, like me, in like previous videos, including the first one, he's saying, hey, Silicon Valley here, get energized. This guy's trying to do you a favor, hint, hint, telling you these tinfoil hats, they might, you know, we're not going to help them. He's looking right at him like, you're supposed to help them. You know, I, he can't tell you, but I'll tell you because you're the one, I'm the one you're supposed to help, possibly. Okay, let's just entertain that notion. So I'm down here. My smart remark is that'll depend on which terahertz tale Hal is telling that day, floating or signals. Because he changed his tune and not changed it back that I've seen. I wonder why it's such a mystery with a little eye roll. 
because I really don't know. But, I, you know, of course I'm going to have a minor conspiracy theory in my favor that these TTSA types, which Hal was one of them, uh, you can look into that if you don't know who that is. I'm not gonna, I can't explain all this stuff. That's the problem with this thing. It's a long story. Um, did they speculate too unintentionally, optimistically, about Terra Earth waveguides and floating? Because Hal came out and said something about possibly finding crash materials that might possibly be a waveguide for terahertz and possibly float. Well, tinfoil hat me has been waiting for years for something like that. I mean, I don't use, I didn't use the terahertz uh, language. I used. Uh, uh, the cosmic microwave background. It's the coldness of space. That's all waves. And a lot of them are exactly terahertz. Or they're a half a terahertz. Or they're two terahertz. Or they're whatever. But what? why you would float in space is because you're supposed to be floating in space. If you're a, a UFO or a future developed, which I'm here to do with maybe Weinstein's help, and his boss, who has wants the flying car, well, it's it's coming right at you, right here. Um, let me just check OBS for one second. Still recording. Everything's 16 minutes already. This could be a long one, folks. Anyway, so I go and I'm sending tweets back like about yes, did TTSA make that speculation? And then Goofball Kelly comes along here in these subsequent tweets and says, hey, that's what I'm looking for. Of course it does, etc. and so forth. But then later on, the deep state CIA guy who wants to help but can't, or possibly, who we don't know, what games do they play and what truths do they tell? And who knows? They're looking out for our best interest. Anyway, um... And he's held to a lifetime NDA. So he's not going to tell tales out of school. But he did go down here and subsequently say, oh, well, we think that might be for uh, that waveguide's for signals, I believe is the exact word, which, mm, uh, you know, if you're me, you're not convinced. And it took a while until I had enough gumption to myself, start thinking, is he pulling a fast one, or, you know, playing dumb, or, you know, I don't know what to believe here. So, I make a comment here, I'm not big on conspiracies, but I do enjoy a real-life mystery from time to time, which it is, to me. I have, I don't know if it's a conspiracy or what, what not, you know, I, and we, I shouldn't know. Um, but what I see, I'm admittedly biased. Yes, I'm biased toward myself because, look, way back when I'm telling his buddy at TTSA, of course they're terahertz. Don't zap it with TH, uh, THC. THZ, that's like splashing water on a boat or something. Why not try to test it where it's supposedly used? You put it in one of these cold outer space chambers which I think their buddy Bob Bigelow might have to test his, or might have had at one time, to test his uh, components of his space hotels or space habitats. So I'm saying go over here, take it over here to your private sector buddy and test it at his place. Trying to be Mr. Helpful here, but you know, I, I don't know how many moving parts are going on. So I naively put that out there, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, but got ignored, whatever, you know. If Deep State's looking at this stuff, what are, what will, if they, as I say up here, is this crowdsourced to, uh, get a crowdsource it, get an answer and bail out? That's what I'd do. Could be. They're like, it's looking right at us. This tinfoil hat knows what it is, or... And, then, and they were so close. They were so close with the floating and all. You know, he's saying right, right out. He said, 
you know, you know the quotes better than I do. The metamaterials, the, I guess it was zinc business, whatever it was, uh, terahertz waveguide. And a highly efficient one, too, using, I think he's, you know, that squeezes the wave better. If I want to pull something in and pump it, I want to pull it in from space, squeeze it down into my skin of my spacecraft or right through the reactor or both, and then blow it out the back because these, these uh, <clears throat> photons of terahertz are a lot bigger than the waveguide. So it compresses it and blows it out, just like a pump in a submarine or a pump on anything, a pump on a, a jet ski or just a, the one I got in the backyard in the, for the well, okay? You know what it is. That's what this does. It's that dumb and simple, I think. But the engineering is <clears throat> challenging. That's why we need a customer like Elon and a funder like, what's his name, Peter Thiel. Okay. Okay, guys, you can hear that out in the back? All right. So I'm not, where am I? I'm big on conspiracy. So I'm telling them, you know, here's how to test it and all this stuff. And uh, so there's some more advice there. Yeah, you put it in a little cold chamber. And here's what I'm seeing. They got a little cold chamber as big as a microwave oven. Like that little mystery thing he put out, Bigelow put out. I thought that might have been it. That's another story and another Twitter moment. Anyway, um, how are my sound levels? You know, I don't want to have to do this again. Test one, two. I am going. No, I, I'm. I will. I don't know why it would be. I'm going to keep going. All right. Where am I? All right, so you put it in a little cold chamber that's as big as a microwave oven, okay? Ooh, it floats. We put it at a certain temperature, the same roughly temperature of space, you know, which, which is variable from depending on where you are. If you're in the middle of nowhere, it's very cold. If you're close to the sun, it's going to warm up. See, see what I'm getting at? You want to have adjustability. Anyway... So you mess around with it because if it's just a piece of a fragment, you know, if you can wave an electric field around it while it's floating, it might go right, it might go left, it might go up or down, something like that, because that's how it's controlled. It's a light pumping, you know, theoretically, light pumping controlled by electricity going through it. You know, a plasmonic, a plasmonic wave guide, perhaps. Probably. That's one way to do it. Or just a plain wave guy. Or an atomic one like a business, whatchamacallit might be. Or a, it could be just absorbing and emitting like a, from an atom, like a piece of uh, helium or hydrogen that looks, uh, well, it would look, it might look like plasma, but so might the plasmonic wave guy, okay? Um, because that's what gas in a balloon does by the way. Anyway, so here I am going on. I'm saying the, the, this terahertz CMB cosmic microwave background light pumper. And here's, you know, I have a little diagram there. You can look at it. And uh, there are other videos, uh, previous videos made on this stuff. So that tells you those steps. And I go on to say, yes, I'm very biased. I think it might be, et cetera, and so forth. Self-promotion. But right now, if I don't do it, no one else will do it. So I'm doing it. Why business? This recent paper looks like it was written by a THZ terahertz waveguide salesman. Because the bismuth, which is in this purported sample they found, debris, is, uh, well, this this scientific paper just says it's how great it is and they use the very clear language which is rare with these and I look at them all to an extent I at least read the abstracts I can't understand good chunks of them of course but I know the bottom line and you know what he said makes sense and it's adding up adds up 
clues are adding up a real life mystery. Not a conspiracy theory. I didn't say that. Because I don't think it is. I think it's a comedy of errors. Uh, so, uh, on the next uh, tweet I said, well, THC is flowing like water uh, through this uh, bismuth in that scientific paper. And I'm comparing it to graphene where it may saturate, but you can dope it. And I'm saying this and that. And down here I said, well, you should start with graphene, you know, here in our atmosphere. Plus it's simple and, you know, I think you have to do these things step by step like everything else. I understand that people want to think they're going to, you know, build a interstellar spacecraft tomorrow once they get the big secret. Well, it's a little secret, which I've repeatedly said what it is, and I'm saying it again, and, uh, but the engineering, hmm, that's your challenge, folks. How do you do what I'm saying you should do better than the next guy? But to get to that point, you got to, you know, understand that this is the way to do it. And I've been saying that. But he's not going to come out and tell you because what did he just say about tinfoil hats and deep states? Listen up. That was the message I got. Anyway, so this business, which is a metal, it can move uh, THZ, which is light, right through it, just like the gases in these hilarious balloons do, okay? If this was in space, you could make the, this cow out of bismuth. You know, if you did it right, it's not that simple, but it's the same principle, buoyancy, light through matter, through and around. Imagine this thing, this cow with, some, with a photon, six, just one photon, and this is a little tiny, you know, uh, nano cow. Something six times bigger than it comes into it, it's absorbed and blows out this side. You think it's going to move at something somewhere close to the speed of light? You think it's going to have some gravity mitigation, inertia mitigation? Yes, it will. And here I say, that's exactly how space, specifically the cold temperatures, will fill it, as opposed to space-time. This is my shot at the competition, but it, they could be right, too. I don't know, but I just think there's too much stress on it. When I'm over here shouting at you about the alternative, which is pretty much of a no-brainer, falsifiable, yet unfalsified, if you deny this, you're denying, basically denying how the phases of nature or the phases of matter work from solid to liquid to gas. All right. Uh, here we go. This is a tweet to UFO Joe about another thing um, Hal Pudoff was saying. The purpose of function is not readily apparent. Now, he said that about some purported wave guy. It's the same thing, except he said it in a different setting. And, you know, after a while, I'm stewing, and I'm saying, so I say back to him something like, oh, perhaps it's simply intuitively obvious to the casual observer instead. And I'm laughing at him with this little emoji. Well, I could be wrong. Or, once again, reason trumps science. And I have nothing against science, but there's a lot of nonsense and lack of reason, common sense, and logic. Uh, and I'll get into that later. And I'm saying here, a tinfoil hat is telling you what it is. All right, calm down. So I say, the hows of the world have not sufficiently considered why something lighter than air. For all I know, he considered it after he saw my tweet two, three, I don't know how many years ago, um, and said it is. Oh, that's the same thing. Well, it is, you know, I say it is. I don't want to argue with myself right now. I've done it for years. It is tiresome. So, uh, then this, uh, this next tweet 
same topic, but not the same get off uh, hell here and TTSA and crash. Well, now we're back on the crash because this is uh, this is a tweet about something alien scientist Jeremy Riss. We all know him. He noticed that there was. I'm not going to go into this one too much because it's a whole nother moment. You can read read it for yourself, but it's about. Tara Hart's research at Wright State University, which is right beside Wright Patterson Airport, which is supposedly where they do all this secret research on crashed UFOs and things like that. So that adds to our real life mystery. And what did I say about it? Well, we just pointed out the fact that. Between Jeremy and me on that, on that day when this, a scientist over there got arrested. You can read it for yourself. And he was taking home stuff from work and we looked him up. Who is he? And he's a terahertz research guy. And if you read their website, it says, uh, oh, it's cute. Uh, you know, a little comment there. Let's see if I can quickly find it. The group he worked in over there, they're not talking about terahertz for signals. Let me see if I can quote that, find that quote quickly. Oh uh, boy. I, I went into a loop of my own thing, didn't I? Anyway, it says something like, to boldly go where no other terahertz research has gone, which is something about, you know, an obvious hint, an obvious play to Star Trek that we're doing something here for outer space with this stuff and it's nothing to do with signals. So there's your meta material right there from Mike Colangelo, a tweet that we're talking about here, alleged extraterrestrial metal. Silver magnesium zinc alloy. That might be another one from the business one. I forget. Anyway, no, oh, here it is. Yes, alternating dark bismuth and... Yes, all right. So that's in there with the silver magnesium zinc alloy. Okay, dark bismuth might be good for space. Then they use the silver magnesium zinc alloy for being in atmospheres like ours or their own or anywhere else. Who knows? We don't know that yet. We're lucky we can get a balloon off the ground. But, uh... See my... <laughs> See my uh, YouTube on uh, meta materials for that whole rant. So this closes out with me saying to Mike, well, well, he asked, why are we in the dark about this? And I say national security would be my guess. And I play on, why is this here? Go away. Don't go away. Oh, man, I hate these things. Anyway, close that. So why are we in the dark? National security would be my guess, and I, you know, just as bad as the guys playing to Star Trek, I play to this uh, Dune, and you can click on that yourself and see, see what that says. So I guess my point is, when he's talking, a guy like this is talking about tinfoil hats and deep states, in this short clip, that focused me. And when I hear something like this... From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think, although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest, that this is not a tinfoil hat subject, and there's a reality to it, and... Uh, <clears throat> The government is making a concerted effort to to uh, learn more about it. Um, I think any truly deep state increased knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. So, after me talking about this moment. And my feelings on the matter, you can see my, why my response to Hal Pudoff talking about deep state 
and tinfoil hats might be something like this. <laughs> Strictly news, folks. News and entertainment. I only go to the best researchers for my uh, tips. There he is again. Why is he here? Oh, he's here because turns out I answered Ruby's tweet. Oh, and I said, all right, well, this is, a, I'm repeating myself, but I'll say it. I, I'm going to say, I like to think that's his way of saying Kelly was right. So that's me getting a notion of a whole different angle on this. And, um, well, I go on here to say, promote myself, which is what I'm doing. Simply put, tales of red shifting warp, dimensions, time travel, gravity lensing, and the like just don't hold up in the face of observation and reason. And this, I guess he was talking about the blue shifting theory he has for warp drive, which, you know, it might be right, but I, my response to that is I could never quite grasp why something capable of smoothly interacting with 10 to the minus 35 size Planck size space-time would suddenly and randomly bump into huge 10 to the minus 9 size photons. In other words, we wouldn't see it. The question is always, why do they have lights? Why do they have lights? Of course, I mean, to me, it's like, of course they have lights. That's how they get around. Other people have other theories, including, well, red shifting out of warp drive. And I'm saying, hey, click on my thing. Look at this. Look at this little GIF that shows you the difference between a photon and Planck length. And the Planck length is space time. I mean, you're going to have to be able to maneuver at that level of finesse, which is not, it makes no sense. Okay, why would it suddenly bump into that? If you can not, well, uh, the first thing that sprung into my mind was, I used to work in New York City, and I'm, I'm one time, I'm on the 21st floor, and I look out, and I see this giant boat like this thing. See that? They rarely come up in there. And I'm looking at the sand. I knew they were big, but it was like, I don't know, 15 stories or whatever. So I'm looking over at it, and I'm like, wow, wow, that's big, you know. That's a pretty smooth entry. But if you, if you, uh, you know, if you, if you're capable of doing, you know, cruising on plank lengths of space time, why would you smash into visible light? That would be like this giant boat coming up the Hudson River instead of cruising up the middle, purposefully smashing into all the little boats on the side and the wharfs and the ferries. And whoever else is out there kayaking that day, look at that little boat there. And, uh, you know, just why not? You know, why not smash into the, into the pier, you know, into the pier in the, where, you, where you hit golf balls when you can, you know, cruise up the river instead? You know, it, it, to me, it makes no sense. That's where I'm talking about science and logic. That's, that's why you lose me. So, that's what I had to say about that. Uh, we went over the, uh, I don't know why I put that there again, the tall terror, terror hurts tales. Hopefully, you see the light of seeing the light, of light bubbles, light propulsion, the stuff I talk about endlessly that's linked below on my other uh, uh, YouTubes and Twitter moments linked below. Oh, how about a laugh? So somebody made a uh, Tupac Cabra made a little uh, meme about how, and there it is. You can see it. I guess that's Game of Thrones. I don't know. I missed this. What that is, but I see it everywhere, of course. And it's pretty funny. So but basically, this reflected the kind of like the light bulb going off. In my head, it's, I don't know, I, to be more, uh, I don't know. Quit looking to these guys so much because you're not going to get the answer. I mean, 
if they had it and if you gave it to them, they wouldn't tell you. So wake up to the reality of that is what I'm telling myself. And you're going to say, well, who the hell are you anyway to even be, well, here I am. Link below, you'll see a thing that says a light pumping mini manifesto. Now, I wrote this a few years ago uh, to, for people that are going to say, who the, why does this guy, who is this? That'll give you an overview of why I care about this. And what else do we have here? I put these tabs in order, just go down the tabs and think I know, you know, follow that. To tell the tale. Oh, okay. I remember this one. So here we have UFO Joe again, who does a tremendous job, by the way, is at these transcripts and things. So I glom on to him now and then to make my point. And I did it again. He's talking about how and these blue shifts. Okay. So I guess having now that I'm taking his lead a bit better, which I should have been before, I kind of knew it, but I'm, now I'm just admitting it to myself, uh, that, well, I guess I'm just, just giving that same criticism about the blue shifts. And I'm saying the routine's not going to cut it anymore. In other words... I'm not going to attack the guy personally, of course, but every time I see this stuff, you know, some uh, people talking about the mansions and cigar cherries and things that are just, uh, you know, these guys are federal, you know, they're the top people, all right? They should have a best estimate. I think that's the buzzword they use, the best estimate of what's real and what's not real with this science. Stuff. The dimensions, yeah, okay, string theory. I respect the people that come up with it. I couldn't come up with it. I can barely, barely understand it. But I can read certain science writers. I'm going to name names. Philip C. Ball. And the other one is Jim Baggett, B-A-G-G-O-T-T. -T. And these guys go through, they're writers. And they go through these theories, and they write in plain English. Well, they're also PhDs in physics and stuff like that. So they can dumb it down for a guy like me, who prefers words and reasoning. And they will tell you that a lot of this time travel, mm, you know, go read it yourself. But that's where I get off, you know. It's like, well, where do we, I get off? Telling people the time travel. Where is that tweet? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, here it probably not there. I hate when I lose my place. But you know, whatever those things are, I criticize time travel, especially the dimensions and things. That's it's possible, but it's way out of the realm. And the most serious of the serious, when you get to the bottom line. That's what they say, and it makes sense to me. So why I'm, uh, I'm off a little bit off, gonna find my place. Okay, there, there, there it is. So I guess this, yeah, this back to this tweet to UFO Joe. This is me telling, I guess, telling myself that I'm gonna be a bit more assertive, I suppose, in this conversation. You can call it. People have called it science disclosure. Because Hal Puda himself is telling you, don't listen to me. <laughs> so, or listen to me to an extent. So, after a couple of years, even that'll sink through even my skull. So, all right, I'm not going to take you seriously. I mean, completely. All right, this is the hour-long video. Oh, that's, that's a short clip. But this... Link here is the hour-long video I'm talking about the mind-breaking discussion between the great Eric Weinstein and Harold Pudoff, former NSA CIA ATIP, on the possible physics of UFOs, private airspace, etc. and so forth. So he's trying to give Weinstein a hint, I suppose. 
So, he's not the only one that uh, is listening. Which is good. This is all good stuff. And here it is. I think that's linked. Yes, I linked that below since I'm riding on the coattails. Not ashamed to admit that. I mean, I came up with this stuff 10 years ago. I like to say that to mark my spot, but if this stuff wasn't happening, I don't know where I'd be with it, you know? So, let's have some goodwill on that if I step on any toes here. So, kind of winding down. Yeah, mostly. It's uh, We go on to a tweet by Weinstein. And he, now he's separate. This is separate from what we were talking about before. And he's waxing eloquent about space and Mars. He's saying well, it's far more likely that we will voyage to the cosmos using new science than that we will make Mars inhabitable using rocketry. Okay, he's throwing down. He's getting a message of some sort. He's he's fired up for something. New science. So here comes a tinfoil hat, one of 159 responses saying, still pining for something new when you don't even use what you've already got? Amusing. Because I'm telling them you have the physics, you have the science. A dummy engineer slash attorney can figure it out even. You know, I'm not, I'm not the PhD of... Uh, you know, like these guys, but I'm sorry. Sometimes you don't need to be. You need to not be. But if you are, you ought to listen. And I think eventually the argument's so strong for this stuff that, uh, you know, it doesn't even need me. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It'll come out. All right, so um, so I, uh, I try to smart Alec him into looking at that. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And then I link up that page on the five observables, which I've linked up before on other videos. And maybe I'll link up again, if I remember, for this one. Check right under your nose, I tell him. And then link the uh, Twitter moment. It's under his nose. Look at it. So go down the rabbit hole. you got nothing to lose but trillions and trillions of dollars for your boss. He's going to say, did you look? Why didn't you? All right. And this guy works for him, too. And I'm hitting him on Twitter, too. And he's got a space company. It's not propulsion. But look at him. He's got, he's got the answer right there. Sort of. He's longing for the days of blimps. And this airship, I guess that's a prototype something or a you know a, a concept and I'm saying yeah 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 where you been chief we're gonna take that very principle of buoyancy and we're gonna optimize the hell out of it till we're chasing tic tacs but you gotta admit I'm right first well generally speaking you're not gonna get there unless you go through this principle as far as I know I'm the only one out here talking about it um and now I'm retired and I've got 20-something years to get it done, okay? Get it through your heads. And this will do this stuff. It's, it, it is what it is, with or without me. Um, and your boss will get the flying car, because his boss is Mr. Teal, who made the flying car a famous fly. He's a billionaire, uh, you know, Facebook, PayPal, Mafia, his own company of, of, of uh, venture capital, and what was I going with that? So these guys work for him, and he's the kind of guy that could stumble upon the right answer, which is this, or it's possibly one. So I'm going to start sassing back to the Pudoffs and the TTS, you know. I call them mainstream disclosure, but that, that, I don't know, that doesn't make sense either. But anyway, and these guys, I'm going to hit on them harder. Well, endlessly until, you know, whatever. Well, I can think of something else to do. So, um, what was that movie where the guy wanted his $2? It's 
be less, gotta be more like that. Anyway, so yeah, the flying car quote. All we got was 180 characters, 140 characters. You got your flying car on Twitter. That is the 140 characters right there. 280, okay? You got it. You got to move. I can't do it alone. All right. And, you know, to get even more practical. Yeah, I remembered yesterday. And this guy's tied into the national security deep state tighter than anybody. His company is one of the deep data, you know, what's Osama bin Laden's position, you know, is he sitting on the couch or the chair? He's into that level of stuff. And I'm saying here, out here, that's the, we'll call it roughly defense security. Now, here with this defense security, in the aerospace world, with Russians, Chinese, and even North Koreans either shooting hypersonics or claiming to, and I'm seeing headlines, America behind on hypersonic. Wow, how about that? Now, March 3rd was around, you know, right when that war in uh, Iraq. Ukraine and Russia started firing up. People were talking about nuclear weapons and chemical whatever. I start getting a little itchy too over here in Pennsylvania, nice and safe. But, you know, you're telling me this top uh, defense people, they're still using Newton, thrust, force, etc. When I'm telling them, how about you skip that and go straight to what I'm saying, which will be right, okay? It'll be a step ahead of where we are now. You may get your warp drive 200 years from now or something, but better. You better start here. You can't skip steps, period. I don't make those rules. I see them. I observe them. Okay. What is this? Oh, now we're really winding down because I'm going to cool off a little bit with these birds. Yeah. That was a nice break. Took a sip of coffee. Cooled down a little bit. Thank you for tolerating me. And then we shift into the self-promotion of subscribe and like my stuff. Read all my moments. That's all I ask. Here's some little entertainments here for you. As we start to wind down... With a little funky reggae, I guess. Hey, birds, you know what I mean? The role of aerospace companies as holders of potentially basic scientific knowledge not shared with the academic world it seems very wrong to me. Maybe wrong, but it's um, true. It is true. It is true. Physics knowledge held by aerospace companies that is not in the future, which involves top Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that moves all of the presidents on UFOs. The guy named Hal Putoff.
Oh, 